all of you to stand for the opening prayer. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Dear Lord, we come to you in spirit, humility, and love. We are grateful for this opportunity to learn and grow closer in our faith. We ask a prayer to bless our time together as we explore the teachings. I ask all this in the glorious and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you may now take your seats. So good day everyone. I am Jenemy Aflapora. So in this presentation, I will be discussing the review on the genres of poetry and literary devices. So the objectives of this video lesson, at the end of the lesson, the students are expected to, to know the definition of the poem, to know the different types of genres of poetry, to know the examples of each type of genre of poetry, to know the definition of literary devices, to know its purpose and its functions, and to know its different types of literary devices. Talk about first the review on the genres of poetry. Let's define first the definition of poetry. So when we say poetry, it is a type of literature that tells I that conveys a thought, describes a scene or tells a story in a concentrated lyrical arrangement of words. Poems can be structured with with rhyming lines and matter. The rhythm and emphasizes of a line based on syllabic beats. Poems can also be free form, which follows no formal structures. So we are now in the types of poetry. The first one is the narrative poem. Narrative poem tells a story. It is a form of poetry that tells a story, often using the voices of both inner and characters. So we have here the examples of poetry and this category. It includes first the allegory. It is a narrative poem that uses an extended metaphor to make a point. Next is the ballad. It is a narrative po poetry set to music. Next is the burlesque. It is a mock epic poem that tells an ordinary story in a melodramatic way. Lastly is the epic. It is a lengthy poem that tells a story of heroic adventures. So if the story changes over the course of the poem, it is a narrative poem. The rhyme scheme and the matter may change between narrative poems, but all narrative poems tell a story from the perspective of a third person narrator. So the next is the lyric poetry. It uses song like and emotional words to describe a moment, an object, and a feeling or a, per or a person. Lyric poems do not necessarily tell a story, but to focus on the poet's personal attitudes and state of mind. They use sensory language to set the scenes and inspire emotions in the readers. So, there are several types of poetry that one could classify as lyrical poetry. They include first the allergy, a reflective poem, honor the death. Next is the haiku, a 17th syllable poem that uses natural imagery to express an emotion. Next is the odd, an elevated poem that pays tribute to a person, idea, place, or another concept. Next is the sonnet, a descriptive 14-line poem with a specific rhyme scheme. So when you read a lyric poem, you are um, transported to a different time or place. Writing lyric poems is an effective way to illustrate your perspective and share your special moment with others. So next is, is a dramatic poetry. It is also known as dramatic monologue. It is meant to be spoken or acted. It is similar to narrative poetry because dramatic poetry 
tell us a story as well. You're most likely to find dramatic poetry in the form of dramatic or even comedy, monologues or soliloquies written in the rhythm verse. So many dramatic forms appear as first is the monologue. It is speech given by one character to another or by one character to the audience. It is also known as dramatic verse when not in poetic form. Next is soliloquy, a speech given by one character to himself or herself. A dramatic representation of inner monologue. So while narrative poetry is told by a narrator, dramatic poetry is written from the perspective of a character in the story. Narrative, narrative poetry tends to set the scene and describe what's happening, whereas in dramatic poetry tends to lead with a main character entering the scene, scene and speaking. Okay, let's move on. We are now in literary devices. So let's define first the definition of literary devices. Literary device. So in literature, it is a technique used to help the author to achieve his or her purpose. It is any specific aspect of literature or a particular work which we can recognize, identify, interpret, and or analyze. Both literary elements and literary techniques can rightly be called literary devices. So we have here the a, one of the examples of literary devices. First is the imagery. It refers to the way words create or suggest pictures in the reader's mind. What we see, hear, smell, feel, or taste. We have here the um, example of imagery. First is the pungent fragrance of orange blossoms sweetly drifted through the air, or the stunning blue waters spar sparkled with brilliant clarity. Next, literary devices is a symbol. It is any object, person, place, or action that has a meaning in itself and that also stands for something larger than itself such as equality, an attitude, a belief, or a value, such as, such as a rose, often a symbol of life, love. So next is a simile. It is a figure of speech comparing two essentially unlike things through the use of words like, words like, or as. For example, my love is like a rose. Next is personification. It is a figure of speech in which something than human is given human qualities. For example, gray mist on the sea face. Next literary devices is a paradox. It is a statement that reveals a kind of truth. Although it seems at first to be self-contradictory and untrue. Motif. When we see motif, it is a reoccurring feature such as a name, an image, or a praise in a work of literature. A motif generally contributes in some way to find either the theme of a short story, novel, poem, or play. Next is onomatopoeia. It is a use of word in which the sound imitates or suggests its meaning. For example, hiss, clang, snap, and buzz. Next is oxymoron. It is a praise word two or more words are diametrically opposed. For example, sweet corn, wise fall. Hannah's Thief, Short Eternity. Next is example is metaphor. When we say metaphor, it is a comparison that is only suggested or implied with no clear indication of a relation between the two items. For example, her face is wrinkly. Next is next literary devices is foreshadowing it is the use of hints 
or clues in your narrative to suggest what action is to come. Writers use foreshadowing to create interest and build suspense. Next is hyperbole. Hyperbole is an exaggeration of fact used during for serious or comic effect. For example, her eyes open wide as saucers. Next is the flashback. A flashback is a scene in a short story, a novel, or a narrative form or a play that interrupts the action to show an event that happened earlier. Next is next literary device is colloquialism. It is an expression, words, and phrases that are used in informal everyday speech, including slang. For example, the word going to. So in colloquialism, it is gonna. Next is be blue. No, in the words or the phrase to be sad. In colloquialism, it is be blue. Then go away, it's bugger off. We are now in the purpose of literary devices. So, literary devices are tools used by writers to better express their ideas and enhance their creative writing. These devices help highlight special concepts and ideas using text. As a result, it enhances the reader's understanding of the text. So, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching.